Welcome back to Chamber Exchange, a TV show. I want to thank Bank Hometown for sponsoring the show. And here in our final segment, we have Alex Corrales, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Worcester Housing Authority. Alex, welcome. Thank you, Tim. Well, thank we got about the nine minutes, so we're going to get a, a few things in. Got but, a lot to uh, talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Worcester Housing Authority uh, does really important work, but in the in the news lately on some exciting uh, ribbon cuttings and, and announcements. But maybe we could start with uh, Lewis Street. Uh, sure. Uh, a really important program that was open, new program. Absolutely, so we recognize as a housing authority that we're serving the most vulnerable population. And the community as we've seen clearly in Worcester, there is a huge demand not only for affordable housing, but now for housing for individuals that are chronically unhoused. Um, and so we're seeing that just worsen day yeah. in, day out. Part of our goal was to come up with some solutions that we can be part of with the community. So we worked with numerous partners from the state level, private, all the way to the city of Worcester. In terms of building 24 units that will be exclusive for folks who are chronically unhoused with wraparound services right, over right. on Lewis Street. And I think that's a key point. So those, those services are going to allow us on a daily basis to really work with the individuals create plans and goals for them that are specifically customized for them in an effort to remove them from being chronically unhoused. Right, right. And then after a couple of years, you know, depending on the individual, they can elect to maybe transfer to a standard public housing apartment, which then opens that unit right, right. for the next person. Right. So right. hopefully it creates a little bit of a, of a um, feeding system for us to be able to help folks. Right, new, innovative, and, and uh, important and needed program. Absolutely, uh, yeah. and, but also some some big announcements as well that are going to create a, a fair number of net new units, both uh, uh, affordable and, and and some market rate and home ownership opportunities. And they're going to put people in the construction trades to work. Uh, That's for right. Some pretty good projects. But you've got a major project going at Curtis Apartments at Great Brook Valley that has kind of begun and, and similarly right behind it at Lakeside. So maybe you could t talk about both of those projects a little sure. bit. Sure, and, and those are another direct response to the need that we have in the community. Our properties are old, right? We've, we've been in the business since 1946. So we have some properties that are 75 years um, or 65 to 75 years old. They are difficult to manage, maintain, uh, they're costly and the amenities that were built for the 1950s are not the same amenities right. that people need in 2023. So what we looked at is rather than trying to find land in the city, which is really scarce and expensive yeah. to try to build on is we said, what if we take our own land and let's redevelop these properties and then maybe build some more. Right. So a site like Curtis, we're able to take 372 units, tear those down, build 529 units where we'll have mixed income families living there. Right. Um, guarantee that the folks that are living there now have a brand new apartment they're coming back to. And what it'll allow us to do is now be able to uh, increase another 150 units on the market for new affordable housing right, units. Right. Lakeside has a similar 202 units. We're gonna increase that to about 328. Mm -hmm. The unique thing about Lakeside is that we're also going to build about 28 homes, and we want to offer that as first time for first-time home buyers. And we hope that a lot They're of our residents affordable. I think with the Mass Works program, absolutely, yep. yep. So they're affordable, and the goal is that the folks that we have in our self-sufficiency programs, if we can help them be ready and be qualified for home ownership. It would be such a great story right. to say you're moving out of public housing and now you own your own home. Building um, equity, family wealth, exactly. And it and it opens that apartment up for the next person on the list. You right. know, we have six thousand people in our public housing waiting list. Wow. We have another sure. twenty two thousand on our section eight list. So we know the need is there. And the only reason that number isn't any higher is because the lists are closed because mm -hmm. we just can't take any more. Right. So we're excited about that and that all comes through because of the fact that we created um, an instrumentality, right? A, a nonprofit non arm, instrument right. arm. And that's Building Futures Inc., which Absolutely. is the nonprofit 501c uh, affiliate of the Worcester Housing Authority. Absolutely. And that's been a real key for us in two really main areas. 
from the development side, it allows us to do these type of exciting projects, you know, and, when, and over the next three to six months, we're going to be talking about another property that we're looking to redevelop because we think we have opportunities to really enhance uh, and address the issue of, of affordability. Um, so that's one side of it. The other side of it is we don't receive sufficient funding to be able to help the residents with their, their, their needs i.e., for example, food insecurity has become a major problem with our residents. Um, we have issues with our kids not being able to have um, after-school programming or summer programming. Um, it could just be during the holidays, being able to help folks okay. out. BFI is a nonprofit allows us to go and apply for grants or receive donations where we're not getting funding for it. We use that as a vehicle to be able to be able to do these exciting things. Um, and we've been able to do it. One of the things that we did during COVID was our elders were stuck in their apartments. They right. couldn't come out. They were afraid to come out. You know, they were afraid of getting COVID. And, uh, and during the summer, beautiful days, what we ended up doing is we hired local bands and they would come to the courtyard and we'd have all the seats separated six to eight feet spread out and we said to the elders come on down and we didn't think much of it and that ended up becoming one of our most successful programs now the tenants demanding it every year <laughs> and we it's become yeah. a whole series right, right. and that the came, power of the arts once again and yeah. through those donations right. that we've received that people believed in it we're able to expand it and do it so there's an and example at the time support local artists who Weren't, weren't able to perform in Absolutely. traditional venues. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And they just love it because you see the residents, though, the way that they just come together. Um, a lot of our residents, we're getting to the holiday season. The holiday season is one of the most difficult times for us at the Housing Authority because a lot of our folks live alone. Yeah. We have elders. We have um, disabled, we have veterans, we have folks who don't have families. Right. So Thanksgiving for them is being alone in their apartment. Um, Christmas and the holidays is being alone in the apartment. We see a lot of instances of depression, a lot of more instances happening during that time. So we recognize we need to be part of that solution. Right. One of the things that we're doing now and, and BFI has become a huge catalyst for it is holiday meals. We, get, we go to 15 sites, we're able to get enough donations and sponsors that we're able to feed the residents. They come down, they have a, a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner. They all come together as a community. We do activities while we're there. Our staff volunteers their time to make sure they're there. And it's just become such a wonderful event that started with a couple of sites and now we're doing it at 15. But again, it's because the community in Worcester here always responds when they need to help and they love helping. And so I always encourage folks, now is the time to help us. That's a big, important event. And so ways that people can, can support uh, Building Futures, Inc. in terms of especially some of these holiday programs that you talked about, the meals, some of the, the, the toy distribution as well for some of the young kids and some of the programs they can go to www.bfiwha.org. Yes. Right? And Absolutely. They can mail uh, donations as well to Building Futures, Inc., care of Peter Fifield, 630A Plantation Street in Worcester. Uh, uh, also, you have uh, a grants and fundraising coordinator as well. Yes, Larissa Swenson. She's an all-star for us. Um, her job is to be out in the community making connections and applying for grants. And we wouldn't be as successful with the, the work that we're doing now in terms of all these these type of events if we didn't have Larissa on the team because she she is, you know, uh, chasing a, as much as you can and making those contacts and that's why it's really really critical for folks we try to make it as easy for them to to donate and uh, and we are excited you know about the the toy distribution we'd love to have you come down to him because I think when you see 400 kids and you get Santa Claus coming in and you have hot cocoa and they're getting all these right. gifts um, just the look on their face to, so they can enjoy the Christmas that that our kids get to enjoy. Yep. It really um, it really sets the tone for us, and we we hope that folks respond and, and contribute to us Good to stuff. support these events. Alex, thank you. 